Hey everybody, so after many, 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 many months of procrastination, I am finally back making videos. I know that I promised you that I would start making videos at the beginning of winter. Unfortunately, I got sidetracked with my job and I need that to be able to keep a roof over my head. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you what I'll be working on moving forward. You see, over the last couple of years, there has been a lot of good development in terms of Linux gaming and home server technologies, especially with the technology of virtualization and Docker. And what I decided to do was, why don't I just make one server that handles everything? One server that handles my gaming, my game streaming in case I'm not like at the TV or at the location of the gaming machine. And then all of my other home services running through Docker, you know, Nextcloud, Home Assistant and things of that nature. In this video, I'm going to be showing you an entire presentation on how to make this. Now, I'm not going to be releasing the video as a one whole video. I'm going to be splitting it into sections. Now, a lot of people are going to start saying, why the hell are you making many, many videos about it? Well, the reality is that one person is not going to sit through that entire video if their configuration or their setup requires something else. For example, if you're a user and you only want to worry about installing Nextcloud, you can just watch the Nextcloud installation video through Docker because it doesn't matter if that is going to be a virtual machine or if it's going to be a regular machine or a Raspberry Pi running Ubuntu. As long as you have Docker, the Docker configuration for the Docker Compose file should work just the same. So this is going to be one big project that's going to have many little services. And the point of those services is to make my life a lot easier. So my overall goal with this project is that I should be able to sit in my living room couch and just play normally like if the server was a console. Now, it should hook up with this Xbox controller wirelessly. I don't want to be running a cable and it should support all of the rumbling features. Now, what I want to do is just whenever I have time and I sit on my couch, I want to play relax. However, if I'm upstairs or in or if someone else is using the TV, I should be able to just stream the contents of the game to my device to like another device that I can play on. So this project should be pretty straightforward and it should be pretty cool. The server is sitting right here, right behind the TV. And because we're gonna be passing the GPU uh, straight to the virtual machine, that GPU's output, the HDMI, is just gonna hook up to the TV. So this is gonna be fun. This is uh, HP Elite Desk, small form factor PC. It is running a 9th gen 8 core processor. I should put it up here. I forgot exactly which one. All I know is that it has 8 cores. It has room for two 3.5 inch hard drive. And if you can see right here, it also has two NVMe SSD slots and as well as an additional SATA port for the disk drive that you can use to power another hard drive. Now this server is supposed to be like uh, the cheapest server that you can get that will allow you to do gaming. It will allow you to run all of your home services. Now in order to get gaming working on this, I bought a low discrete GPU, low profile. Now this is a 3050. It should be enough to allow me to game in 1080p. This computer came with only eight gigabytes of RAM. Um, you can just buy another stick of this, it's a lot cheaper. However, because I already had some RAM laying around, this is like some DDR4 Vengeance, I, I already had it. Um, I'm gonna be using this, I'm gonna add 32 gigabytes. This computer is going to be hooked up to my TV and it should allow me to play on the TV whenever I want. However, it will also allow us to do game streaming, which is important because I won't always be able to play some games on the TV. So let me show you more or less what I plan on doing with this server. I ended up drawing this image to showcase what's supposed to go on this server. Now, I hope that this is clear, but in case it isn't, we have part right here, which is supposed to represent the resources available in the HP Elite Desk. It's supposed to have a CPU and an integrated GPU in that same CPU. It's going to have a discrete GPU, which is supposed to be the RTX 3050. 
is going to have 3.5 inch hard drive bays for two of them. And then I have a network card that I purchased a couple of months ago through Amazon. This may or may not make it into the final project, but I think it would be fun to try. Okay, so if you look at this diagram, all the orange stuff represents Proxmox. This is supposed to be our Proxmox installation. And then here we're going to have three LXC containers running these services. It's going to use Jellyfin, Image, and then Home Assistant. Now, why am I relegating these services to LXC containers, but then you see all these other things that have virtual machines assigned to it? Well, Jellyfin and Image will need access to some sort of GPU for hardware transcoding and an and, and acceleration in general. And I think that the best way to handle this is by allowing Jellyfin and Image to run as LXC containers and then allow the integrated GPU, the Intel integrated GPU, to be passed to these containers. These containers are basically here because they need iGPU access for one reason or another. Um, Home Assistant, I'm still experimenting with, but I think that we will need it eventually. So by allowing Jellyfin and Image to run off the integrated GPU, we can be saving a lot of power because Jellyfin and Image, the way that I use them, I'm not transcoding 4K 60 FPS, you know, HDR content. I'm just transcoding little 1080p videos and maybe I'll need 720 or 480 if I'm on the road. So that's why we're relegating this to the iGPU. But then we start getting into the virtual machines. You see, my main plan for this server is to be able to play games and I wanna be able to play games without having to run through Windows. You see, Windows has become really, really shady over the last couple of years. They are using Windows as a service platform. Even though I pay them money for a license, they just want to cram a bunch of ads. And as soon as I saw a recall, that's when I said I'm out. I am no longer personally using Windows for my server. Steam over the last couple of years has been making a lot of progress with Proton because of their Steam Deck. I think that we are able to just install Steam and install the Proton compatibility layer through the Steam client and be able to play any game that we want as long as it's single player and it doesn't have anti-cheat enabled. Let's have a virtual machine running Linux, in this case Ubuntu. I did not run Bazite for it because I thought about it and I was like, why would I run Bazite? when I can just run Ubuntu and then the Steam client Proton compatibility layer, I would be using a operating system that I'm more familiar with. And that's why I decided to do it this way. Then we we're gonna have another virtual machine with home services. So in this case, we're gonna have PyHole, Vault Warden, which is like Bitwarden, but a self-hostable version of it. Then we're gonna have Nextcloud, Uptime Kuma for notifications about whether or not my services are reachable. Maybe I should run this on another machine that is not the same server that is supposed to be monitoring, but we'll see. Then we're going to have WireGuard. WireGuard will allow us to go through our network whenever we are. It's a self-hostable VPN that will allow us to access our network from anywhere. Then this is a Jellystat. It's a stat statistics service for Jellyfin. And then we're going to have a dashboard that will allow us to access all of these services. And for that, we're going to be using homepage. Then we're going to have another virtual machine for open media vault. I don't have the hard drives at this moment, but the point of this is that open media vault allows us to have a NAS. And because a NAS is super easy to set up with it, I decided to just run open media vault, pass these two 3.5 inch hard drives to it, and then allow us to create uh, certain accounts with certain permissions for some services so that none of these services have any more access to storage that they really need. Then we're going to run the RR stack. Uh, a lot of people have been requesting for me to make a video about this and I finally decided to do so. Now, whether or not this is going to be on YouTube is going to be questionable. YouTube has been cracking down on a lot of these tutorials, even though some bigger channels do this all the time and they don't get in trouble. So, Let's see what happens. Then we're gonna we're gonna get into the if you want open sense. So a couple of months ago, I bought a network card 
that I wanted to run open as open sense on. But the problem is that first of all, I bought a, a real tech card instead of an Intel one. And that made my life a living hell trying to set it up and installing the driver for it. However, it is doable. I was able to do that. Um, however, the reason uh, this is a little bit iffy is because maybe I don't want to run the networking on the same server that I have everything on. Because if that server crashes, if one of the capacitors explodes and I'm no longer able to boot and I'm running my home network through this, the whole network is going to suffer as a result, including the Wi-Fi for my phone and my computer and this and that. So that is more or less the plan of what I'm doing. 